everyone, my name is Cameron, and today I'm doing our book review, so, um, right now it's, eh, well, it's normal for us, but it's pretty crazy for a lot of people. Well, it's not really normal for us because we're still quarantined, so it's not really normal, but it's just any other quarantine day, except for maybe, maybe a few ashes coming down from the sky because of the fires. It's kind of crazy out there, but, um, today was actually pretty good. I rested a lot and I napped a lot, so... I feel pretty good now, and we also ate some pretty good food. Of course, we had to, uh, was it to go or to take out? Take out, yeah, just because we couldn't go in. So, yeah, uh, we're doing another book review on Wishing and Babylon. I did more reading. I'd say we're almost halfway done with the book already because, well, it's small, but the but the uh, words are really small. It's easy, to, it's quicker to read because, uh, some parts I already know. I, I don't skip through it, I still read it. So, um, last time we did, uh, we were talking about, uh, the chariot maker, his friend, Kabi, who was, I forgot what he was, and then, uh, the Richman Babylon Arcad, and, yeah, uh, let's move on. Well, uh, when, when you move on, it's it gets a little bit confusing about who's saying what, and also uh, what's like who's talking in a way. So it gets a little confusing for me because um, they go straight to the quotes and they don't actually say um, said arcad or said that because um, I usually read that in school. So um, yeah, so I kind of have to assume by what they say. Uh, one of them was Insure Income for Thy Future, uh, which was, I think it was by Arcad. He said uh, something about uh, getting, uh, so uh, Arcad has kind of an army of slaves in a way to do everything he doesn't want to do himself. So um, he did that at the time and he said Insure Income for Thy Future, meaning he, he's, he's saying that you need to make an income and back then, the main source of income were probably from slaves and what they did. So, he says that, um, uh, make money your slave. Make his children and his children, their children work for you. Kind of like that. So, today, we can't have slaves. Uh, we could only have employees. And employees, you have to pay them a lot more. So, you can't really do what he's doing. So, you could have to just, uh change it in a way to uh, someone else. Uh, he's giving advice in that council of wise men. Seek the advice of men whose daily work is handling money. Let them uh, <clears throat> let them save you from such an error. I made myself interesting on my into judgment as I'm the brick maker. So uh, he's talking about the time where, um, uh, I think I discussed it in the last video, but uh, one time when he was learning against Al Gamish, underneath Al Gamish, something like that art was learning on him that was his mentor so um he was told a part of all you earn is a part of what you earn is yours to keep which for him was 10 percent or every 10 coppers he gets one so he spent it on uh this uh asmore the bricklayer he told him that he's going to be journeying to the phoenicians and that they're going to sell him uh, some really expensive gems and uh, he could resell them for a higher price. So he's kind of free ordering gems, but from a brick maker, <laughs> um, not like a jewel, uh, a jeweler or anything. And when he came back, he brought back uh, some worthless pieces of glass, and he got fooled because it wasn't. The, I mean, it kind of was the brick maker's fault, but not really, because he doesn't know anything about gems. So he didn't. He didn't purposely uh, bring them back, but um, he didn't. He he, he saw. He saw advice from the wrong person. So, um, when someone gives you advice, uh, not all advice is good. Listen to only good advice uh, because they're probably making bad mistakes and they're probably still not learning from it. So, make sure you're, um, make sure you just get advice from people who are better than you. Uh, actually, they don't need to be better than you to get advice because they only need to be better than you in what you want to know, in a way. 
I mean, you actually no, you, they don't yeah. need to be better than you because they could they probably know stuff that you don't. So you could kind of see advice from anybody, but just think it through, okay? Um. So he said, uh, "Counsel of wise men," unlike what I did. That's kind of what he's saying. Um. Seven cures for a lean purse. Uh, huh. So this guy is talking to uh, the world chancellor, explained to the king, after many years of great prosperity brought to our people because your majesty brought the great irrigation canals and the mighty temples of the gods. Now these works are completed and the people seem unable to support themselves. Uh, the neighbors are without employment. The merchants have few customers. The farmers are unable to sell their produce. <clears throat> the people have not enough gold to buy food. But where has all the gold gone that we spent for these great imp improvements? Demanded the king. It's found its way, I fear, said the chancellor, into the possession of a few very wealthy men or very rich men of, of our city. If, if altars do the fingers of people as quickly as the goat's milk goes to the strainer. And now that stream of gold has seized the flow. Most of our people have nothing to show for the earnings. So he's saying that uh, the people of Babylon are pretty poor except for a uh, few. And that money is going to a few rich people. One of them is Arkad. So um, uh, the king was stopped for some time. Then he asked, why should so few men be able to acquire all the gold? Because they know how, replied the can chancellor. Only may one may not condemn a man for succeeding because he knows how. I mean, you shouldn't really stop him. Because, like, um, I think in some places, if you're rich, um, they would just take your money. So, <clears throat> um, he says that they shouldn't do that because he earned it. And he said. Uh, neither may one with justice take away from a man what he's fairly earned to give to man of less ability. Meaning, uh, if they earned it fair, you can't take it away from them. Because usually, some kings, they would probably just get the wealthy man. They, they would probably just, like, I don't know, um, kind of take his money. Uh, not really tax him, but what? literally steal his money and give it to the people unwealthy. But it's not really fair for him because he had to work for it. And people didn't really do anything. Um, I wanted to do something. They worked really hard, but uh, they didn't really make good decisions uh, when they were younger. So, But why, demanded the king, should not all people learn how to accumulate gold and therefore uh, make themselves rich and prosperous? Quite possible, I can see. But who can teach them? Meaning, uh, you can't give them money but you could teach them how to make money so who can teach them certainly not the priests because they don't know anything about money making who's the who knows the best in our city to become wealthy and he says that the question answers itself your majesty who has amassed the greatest wealth in babylon who was the richest man in babylon she probably asked him uh well my well said my evil chancellor it's arcad He's the richest man in Babylon, bringing him before me uh, tomorrow. The next day, the king uh, had Arkad go before him, and he said, Arkad spoke to the king, Is it true that you are the richest man in Babylon? So it is reported, Majesty said the uh, Arkad, and no man disputes it. How did you become so wealthy? By taking advantage of opportunities available to all citizens of our good city. He's saying that he takes advantage of stuff, but not in a bad way. If there's resources, you could use them. Kind of like if you, um, it's like if someone's trying to, you know, well, it's not really cheating if they allow it. Well, let's say it's a, um, an open note test. He's taking advantage of the open note and actually looking at his notes. And some people don't bother to look at the notes to try to save time. But, um... He's taking advantage of what is, everyone has the same opportunity, and he's using that opportunity, but some people don't. Uh, you have nothing to start with, only, said the king, uh, only a great desire for wealth 
besides this nothing. So Arkad had nothing, you don't need to have anything either. I mean, he kind of had something, a job, but um, uh, other than that, he didn't have anything. Uh, Arkad continued the king. Our, our city is in a very unhappy state because a few men know how to acquire wealth and therefore monopolize it. Meaning that uh, there's only a few people who take all the money, become really wealthy, and live a good life. And some of the rest have to suffer because there can't be rich without poor. You know that? Mm -hmm. so there's no such thing yeah. as everyone becoming rich. I don't know what the king well, is trying to do. Trump think. is rich without being poor. <laughs> what? No, he was no, born no. with a be, silver spoon. You have to be... No, no. I'm talking about everyone. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can be rich because mm -hmm. the definition of rich isn't existent. Mm -hmm. Like, not everyone is special, although I special would lose its definition. You're unique. But you're not special because that means you're just normal. Because that means special will be normal. That's just something you think about um, <laughs> every day. So, um, so uh, I'm going to skip a little bit and kind of summarize what he's saying. Uh, will you teach? Uh, will you lend your knowledge to a school for teachers? And you could train them until they could train others. Ar Archive Bowen said, I am the, hu the humble servant to command whatever I knowledge to possess, what I gladly give for the betterment of my fellow men and the glory of my king. So he's accepting, he's going to teach. Um, later, in compliance with the king's command, uh, he got a hundred assembled in a great hall of temple of learning. Uh, which I think would be a school even for an adult, and, or probably just a meeting. Uh, they seated upon a colorful ring in a semicircle. Arkad sat beside a small tablet. Tablet? I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't think I learned that in school yet. I'm assuming it's probably. That's why you use dictionary. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think this is the same exact book as what I read in the past. Get a dictionary. But smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I'm not doing that. Um, Behold the richest man in Babylon, whispered a student, nudging his neighbor as Arkad arose. I mean, I would be excited, too, if the richest man was kind of in the same room as me. So, um, What question would you ask him if he sit right next to you in the same room? Uh, how did you get there? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask him for every single detail. I'm going to ask him a lot of good questions because their time is very precious. And if we ask dumb questions, they're just going to set you aside. I'm just going to ask him. I'm just going to ask him as much questions as I can that make sense. Like like what? Like how you get there? Uh -huh. Yeah, how you get there. And how he answers, I question that. It's like, I got here because I did this. And like, how did you do that? <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying how, why, what, and all that. Um, as a dutiful subject of a great king, Arkad said, I stand before you in a service. Because once I was a poor youth who did greatly desire gold, and because I found knowledge that enabled me to acquire it, he asked that I impart into you. Meaning, I was like you once, and I eventually became wealthy, and I want to teach you how to become wealthy too. I started my fortune in the humblest way. It had no advantage, not enjoyed as fully by you and every citizen in Babylon. The fourth storehouse of my treasures was a well-worn purse. I loathed its uh, useless emptiness. Uh, I desired that it would be round and full of cooking with sound of gold, meaning he had a strong desire. He looked at his purse or his, today our, his wallet I mean, I'm pretty sure um, I'll, now it would be a bank account, not a wallet, because um, you probably won't have that much cash in your wallet. But it's okay, it's pretty nice to carry cash instead of credit, as a lot of books say. Um, uh, where is it? Okay. He, so he just wanted to learn. He saw every way to learn about a, a lean purse or how to fix 
how to fix being on well how fi how to fix being broke and what he's saying how to become it um or a recipe to uh, uh a recipe to becoming rich pretty much so they started talking the first cure there's gonna be seven of them start diet first to fattening uh when it gets fatter that means there's gonna be a lot of money in it meaning it's gonna become fat uh, my good, he's asking someone in the second row, my good friend, what crafts work to style or what do you work at? Uh, I replied to man and scribe and carve records upon the brief tablets, which today would probably be an author or maybe a, um, I'm not really sure, <laughs> probably just an author or someone who writes or a writer or a script builder or something, maybe a script maker for movies or something. Even as such labor, did I earn my first coppers. Therefore, you have the same opportunity to build a fortune. So he's going to go on to ask every single person about their job and, and telling them that um, I'm the same as you. I was you once and all of that. Kind of just to encourage them because he actually was there once. He, I think he, he might have been a slave in the before. I know I kind of remember it from the other videos. But <clears throat> he... We're only going to go through um, like four people. I'm going to tell you about four because that's the only one that the book shows. Um, he spoke to a, a man farther back. Pray tell us how do you earn your food or how do you make your money? I responded to the man and a meat butcher. I do buy the goats the farmer raised and kill them and sell the meat to the housewives and hide and the hides to the sandal makers. So he's a salesman or butcher in a way. Um, because though dust earn, because you also work and earn, uh, you have every advantage to succeed that I also possess. And he proceeded to ask every single person in the room. That must have taken forever uh, what they did. Because you all, uh, now my students, you can all see that there are many uh, work, many things to work at in which men may earn coins. Okay. Get out. No you. Alright. So, um, he just threw me off. <laughs> Dang it. Say so everyone do have different skill, what? Right? Mm. Okay, uh, he was just talking about how um they all had the same opportunity to make money. Okay. Each of the ways of earning is a stream of gold from which the worker does. And therefore, into each person you are slowly the stream of coins, larger, small, according to his ability. And uh, they all, is that not so? Meaning, uh, cut your stream into you get, you get a piece of your stream and bring it towards your purse because uh you build your wealth off of you can okay i don't know how to say it um set some money aside to live set 90 percent of your money aside to live and pay for needs the rest of the 10 percent can go towards want and building your your worth what what how your net worth kind of so um then our cat turned to a humble man who declared himself as an egg merchant if you select one of the baskets into each morning 10 eggs and take out from each evening nine eggs what about to happen it will be in time overflow why because each day i put in one more egg than i take out Oh my gosh. I think I just took a piece of hair in my mouth or something. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, okay. This is similar to getting ten dollars. Uh, you make ten and you take one, you put it aside, and the rest of the nine. And every day it grows, that one thing you put aside grows one dollar. Maybe a day, maybe an hour, maybe a... I don't know. Let's say it's just say an hour or something. Um, you yeah, set it aside, it's going to grow that much. 
and it's going to build over time until it gets big. I mean, that might not be the most effective way of doing it because it's probably going to take forever. Um, so, you know, now the savings not like before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before they had compound interest, though. Yeah, before, yeah, they have compound interest. So all you have to do is just put in saving. It will, like, compound. Now it doesn't compound like that. You have to invest. Mm -hmm. yeah. But some do. But uh, the second cure, no. Fine. Alright. Whatever it is, this is going to be uh, making income. The second mm -hmm. cure. The second it's cure good. controls that expenditures. How can a man keep one tenth of all he earns in his purse when all the coins earns are not enough for his necessary expenses? And he said, How many of you carry lean purses? All of us. But you do not all earn the same, some earn more than others. Meaning, I mean, this one was kind of confused because I don't think that lessens enough to make you very, like, uh, already have a lot of money in your wallet. But I guess that worked. Because, of course, income or some sort of money coming in and setting, I mean, with this one, all it was was talking about, um, actually, yeah, they now probably grew some money in the purses, I guess. And all of them carry the lean purse that day, and control, uh, confuse not the necessary expenses with the desires, meaning, don't buy anything unnecessary, and make, overall, just make uh, good decisions, budget your necessary expenses meaning even though it's a need you could slightly budget it because i don't know it's a need i mean you probably budget your wants more than your need because because you know it's a need but um you're finding a way how to cut out of the needs and put it into the wants mm -hmm. which i'm not sure if that's the greatest idea uh what's the question um so i think the concept of this is is cutting out the needs and putting it into the wants Cutting the <clears throat> need, put it in one. What, what, why do you say that? Like what? What kind? He says that <clears throat> budget what's your necessary spending. Uh huh. Yeah, that means that um, just save the money for what you need first, you know? And Mom, the rest. Did you hear what I said? Uh, the rest you use it for what you want. Mm -hmm. No, did you hear what I said? No. <laughs> what? I just told you it. Yeah, but. Okay, so. I need more content too. All right. Yeah. It says, um, budget, the necessary expenses, necessary expenses, necessary means the need. needed, mm -hmm. budget the needs. Okay, that means that once you have income coming home, the paycheck, the first thing you need to do is put away your money, um, like what would percentage, like 10% of your money away for saving. The second is put away the money for things that you need, all the need expenses, necessary expenses. Then... You, you cut another pie, you know, you give to charity and then you give to, you know, and then the last is for uh, what you want a play. He's saying, education. he's saying spend less money <clears throat> on what you need. Budget. He didn't say spend less. He said, you know, make, make sure you Budgeting allocate like enough. He's kind of spending a little bit less. Yeah, like not more than 40% of your income on things you need, you know? Like things you need is like mortgage, a house, you know, a rent, you know, food. You know, try not to go over 40%. Okay. Um, so that one was just about budgeting the whole time. I'm going to go a bit quicker because this is, there's a lot of them. Uh, third tier, make that gold multiplier. Behold, that in purse is fattening. And how many of us put our gold to work? Well, he's just going to start, uh... Start them talking about something really important. This one is where multiplying your money, which I think has to do with investments. No, no, you should go over that seven thing that's important. The seven, uh, what's it called? Things that he, he teach people. You have to go over that. That's important. What do you think I'm going over right now? Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I thought you said you were going to skip it. The seventh. I thought you said you're going to skip it. I'm okay. skipping some of the parts in it, not the numbers. Okay, make sure you don't skip the important parts, okay? I yeah. know, I'm skipping through like a few sentences and a few okay. paragraphs. Okay, sure. Why would I skip the most important thing in the book? <laughs> I know, you just wanted that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is going to be a good story about, um, 
My first investment was unfortunate for I lost it all. It's still I will relate later. My first possible investment was a loan I made to a man named <coughs> Agar, a shield maker. Uh, one each year that he buy large shipments of bronze and brought it across the sea to use his trade. Lacking in sufficient <coughs> capital to pay the merchants, he would borrow from those who had extra coins. He was an honorable man. His borrowing he would repay to together with a liberal rental and so would his shields. Each time I loaned to him, I loaned him, I loaned back also the rent until he has paid to me. Therefore, I did not, therefore, not only did my capital increase, but the earnings likewise increased. I mean, I'm not sure if that's possible now, because banks <laughs> won't make you that much interest anymore. Um, oh, you loaned to some, some um, like, you know, people who need the money to like invest. Like, you know, some people need um, money to do real estate. They have the skill, but they don't have the money. You lend it to them, and they give you interest, and it, which is higher than the bank. You know, but because it's a little bit more risk, so they give you high interest. Or some people want to start a business, and and they give you the business idea, and then you can decide to invest with them. You know, fund them uh, their their business, then you make a return when they make money. Or they promise you like, oh, let me borrow your Do money every is. month. I will pay you twelve percent interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but make sure you have the contract in place to protect you in case you don't pay. So, hold on. Each time I loan to him, I loan back. I'm going to read this one because it's going to be really important. Therefore, not only did my capital increase, but earnings like my increase, meaning he took that interest and he put it back in towards that. And. Most gratifying was it to have these sums returned to my purse. I tell you, my students, a man's wealth is not in the coin he carries in his purse, it's the income he builds. I mean, just because you have a, a lot of money saved, that doesn't mean anything. Because that, that just means you're not living your life. You're, just, you're probably not going to be that happy because it's going to all going to be all in a piggy bank or something, or in a jar. So, he's <clears throat> saying that the best thing would probably be to have... You, would you rather have a lot of money stored or a lot of income? You'd rather have a lot of income mm. because the money will run out. Income might run out if you keep lose on your coming in. income, but it will just keep going. It's not going to, it's not guaranteed to run out. Mm -hmm. So, um... Great income I required, so great that I am called a very rich man. My loans to Edgar were my first training and profitable investment, meaning uh, this was Arkad's first profitable investment that, uh, what's his name again? All Gamish. He taught him that, and that was his first investment he did to Edgar the shield maker. And um, so there was one story. A farmer, when his son was first born, took 10 pieces of silver to a money lender and asked him to keep it on a uh, rental for his son until he became the year, uh, 20 years of age. Uh, this the money lender did and agreed the rental should be one fourth of its value each for four years. Now this is a lot, um, which is like 25% interest, meaning your, uh, your money will grow like 25% or like one fourth every single year. So if you had a million dollars, you would earn instantly like 250K per year. And then that thing will multiply like 300K. Then it'll just keep going. Now that doesn't exist now. Um, because I don't think you could find someone who will give you that much. Wait, is it possible that, that someone could give you that much interest? Um, at high risk, yeah, it depends. It's, people can lend you up to 20% interest. Hard money lender that will uh, lend to other people that want to do investment in real estate, they charge you a lot of interest, like up to 20% interest. 25. Yeah, or 25, those, uh, what's it called? Um, payday loan. 25% <laughs> interest. But but it's riskier because those people might not pay you back. The safer, safer it is, the lower interest. The, the riskier it is, the higher interest. Okay, so the bank is like less than 1%, like a fraction of 1%, like... I like said point zero zero, you can barely see it. 4-4, four, four, so... Mm -hmm. 
So it's really small. Um, you're not gonna become rich off of that. You're probably going if you if you're gonna make money off of giving away your own money safely, then you're probably gonna loan it, but not to the bank. Um, we, yeah, and it depends on when you need the money. If you need the money emergency, then you don't want to lend it to someone where you cannot get it back anytime. You know, you have to put some in like money market or some that have a little bit more high interest, maybe 1%. There's some bank that give you 1%, but you have to know what bank that is. But it's nothing. <laughs> you can't beat inflation. Inflation is 5%. So you're actually lo losing the value of money. So yeah, you lend it to someone, and then make sure you can get it back anytime. Or can't get back six months or something like that, you know? Don't let it too long. Mm. Like mommy lend the money to someone and mommy wanna be able to get it back in six months, have an, an option. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say one more and mm -hmm. that'll be for tomorrow because it's already been a little bit over half an hour. It's and not I'm about saying, half an hour. You have to say up to the point you finish reading because if not, you know, you forget. You haven't done video for a while. Okay. Um. All right. Let's continue on the story. Uh, tw uh, grew in one fourth, reached value every four years. Uh, the farmer asked because his son has set aside long. Um, when his boy has reached the age of twenty, uh, the farmer went to the money lender to inquire about silver. The money lender explained that because the sum has increased by compound interest, the original 10 pieces have now grown to 31 half pieces. And the farmer was well pleased because the son did not need the coins, so he left them with the money lender. When the son became 50 years of age, the, the father, meantime, had died or passed to the other world. The money lender uh, paid the son in settlement 167 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. And so if if interest was this big, I don't think you need to work anymore. Because like, I can just put my money it's in the bank and I can just sit down and do whatever I want. And it's pretty much working. And I don't think that's how it works because now you have to actually choose your investments or have someone choose it for you. And just do it. It's not going to be putting your money in a piggy bank and it grows a lot. So you're probably, it's going to be a little bit different today. You still need to have some kind of, um, yeah, you have to yeah, do so some kind of work. Similar, mm -hmm. But not the same. Not really mm -hmm. the same. The fourth cure. Guard thy treasures from loss. Uh, meaning, don't... Misfortune is something that you can do yourself into. It's not bad luck. Uh, luck isn't really luck. I mean, it kind of is. Uh, you don't want to depend on it. I mean, some other books depend on it. But um, you could put yourself in a position to get lucky. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you probably get lucky usually by someone else. It's not going to be like a natural disaster and all of a sudden you're really lucky or something it's probably going to be because someone gave you a good opportunity um the only way someone could give you a good opportunity is if you let them or if they know about it when you prepare uh -huh. yeah so like if you put up a sign or something then you put yourself in the position to get a good deal or also probably get a bad deal but um just don't accept the ones but I mean, you could you could control good and bad deals. I mean, you could get rid of the good, you could get rid of the bad and keep the good. So that's kind of mm -hmm. the nice thing. It's a phase. They say you have no luck than having a luck, and you're not prepared for it. <laughs> you have opportunity, and you have not prepared for it. Yeah. Um. So just pretty much security, and don't spend it on anything stupid or anything that makes sense. Like what he did with the brick maker. That was a bad move. Um. What are the spending that are stupid? Give an example. Uh, spending your money on scammers. <laughs> uh, uh, buying useless things that you think is an investment, but it really isn't. I'm not sure if um, gold really is a good investment. I mean, it sounds good, but it doesn't sound good to me because it's just something that you could probably lose. Don't invest in something that you don't know, Warren Buffett say. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm probably not going to invest in that. Mm -hmm. Well, not until I learn about it a little more. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth gear make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. Meaning, he was just talking about, um, you can, he's talking about pretty much living. And uh, he recommends, 
he recommends that um, he makes money, he brings back home for the family, and the wife uh, cooks the food that's in their backyard. I'm not sure if that's a thing anymore, because um, the backyard, or your backyard will probably only have vegetables, probably not meat, unless, I'm think, I don't think the average American has a farm in their backyard. <laughs> um, so, that might not exist now. Um, I'm not eating corn for the rest of my life. Uh, <clears throat> so, back then, I don't think they really cared. I mean, they kind of cared, but there's not much they could do about it. So, the ideal back then was bring back money, wife cook vegetables and herbs from the backyard, eat food, you're happy. Happy life. But now, that's not a happy life. Dude, we demand so much new nowadays. <laughs> um, you what, so you won't be happy? You, you won't be happy if, if you have food at home and you don't have I mean, to I'll be it? happy, but I don't want to eat, like, a cabbage for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> what? It's funny the way you put it. <laughs> um, all right, it's almost over, but. So, pretty much just enjoy your life. That's kind of what this one was about. You can't. There's no point in money if you're not going to enjoy it. I mean, you um, some people enjoy making money, but if you don't enjoy making money, then you should probably use that uh, 10% and kind of make yourself happy. You should live your life. That's why you have to allocate the last money if you have some yeah, to, for fun. Yeah, if you live your life doesn't mean, uh, doesn't mean you go hashtag YOLO, which means you only live once, and they do something really stupid and probably kill themselves. Um, that doesn't mean that because you're... Um, if you only live once, I mean, not really, but if you if you care about your life, you want to have a long one. So, um, just... Hey, mommy, allocate 2% for fun <laughs> Oh my money. 2% <laughs> for fun, and I use other people's money for fun. <laughs> what? How? How? Because when you only have 2% to spend and other people want to have fun with you, they have to pay for your part. <laughs> but no one pays for you, though. Huh? Who pays for you? Whoever want my my uh, to have fun with me, want to hang out with me. <laughs> but they wouldn't pay for you though. Like who does that? Who does that? There's always someone. Okay. It's not me. It's not high. There's always okay. someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, six year ensure future income. Well, back then, the <coughs> back then the future income was uh buying an, an army of slaves, golden slaves. But now the future income would probably be teaching your children how to make money and let the generation live on and don't spoil them. Because I remember, if when you think about it, if I if I'm very wealthy back then, I thought might as well spo spoil my kids and make them very happy. I mean, they're probably not gonna be happy. They're probably gonna be angry every time. So maybe now I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna be kind of strict with them. But in a way, a little bit nicer. But I'm gonna be strict in what I want them to learn, and I'm probably gonna have them. Maybe they'll attend college. Maybe not. Um, they'll probably maybe if they don't have a business, then I'll send them to Harvard or something. If they do have a business, and they might be able to skip because um, what's the point in having a degree if you're not gonna work anyways? So. Uh, but are you gonna be like mommy? How a mommy teach you, or are you gonna be like a little bit different? Slightly different. Like how I'm different? Try to make how's decisions. the same and how's different? So my plan would probably be to <clears throat> um, the first thing they ever taste would be a vegetable. I would have them be healthy, and I'm going to um, teach them, send them to really good schools, and have them start early. But aside from school, I'm gonna teach them what I know and stuff outside of school, and I'm gonna have them uh, selling something when they're really young, when they're like 13 or 14, and they're going to be uh, working, not working, but they're gonna have business, uh, an online business when they're 16, or, I mean, some people have online businesses around my age, um, but uh, I'll probably have them do that maybe, and I'll figure it out once I get older. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's your future income, so I just discussed that, and that's where I ended off. I never really got to seven. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video on uh, the Plan Babylon. Summarize three things.
today. The for the cares. Uh, enjoy your life, ensure future income, and control what you spend and budget. So if you guys enjoyed this video, see you guys next time. I think my brother's up next. Uh, see you next time. Bye for now.